One of the keys is remember where you came from, keep that shit in the front of your mind, and when shit goes bad and it goes sideways, a lot of shit does, you're getting booed out of the fucking building, or you're coming through this injury, or people are you writing you off, oh, you guys ain't gonna fucking make it, you know, any of that shit. You gotta, you gotta keep it in here. You, and it really has to, it should drive you. This idea and this notion that you could be anything you want and you can accomplish anything you want, right? We hear that, you've heard that from the time you were little boys. You hear that now. You're already incredibly accomplished. You can win an NBA championship, MVP of the league. You could become president. You could become governor. You can have, you could be in, 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 in um, you could be in entertainment. You could do Charles and you could do Shaq. You could do that. You could do whatever you want to do. You guys know that. The thing that has worked for me is to remember the hard times. So, and I'm sure you guys all have your processes. And again, I'm going to tell you what's worked for me. So before a big movie comes out, before back in the days when I was wrestling with WWE, a WrestleMania match, anything big that would happen, I would always take a moment and I just remind myself, all right, I was evicted when I was 14. We were kicked off the island. We couldn't live in Hawaii Had no place to live. Uh, a lot of shit happened then when I moved to Nashville. I was arrested multiple times by the time I was 16 years old. Like, I remember that. Um, if I were playing on this team, uh, which my, you know, my skills are, um, what's that term? Oh, the shits. So I never play. But before I lace up, before I get on the court, before I play in these big games, before I go to the Staples Center, where history is there, those are, those are historic walls there at the Staples Center. Uh, I would remember that and it allows me then to be present in the moment and understand, holy shit, this, the stuff I have around me right now, this is the shit that I dreamed of when I was a kid. I am here. And I played for University of Miami, played for great teams. Warren Sapp, Ray Lewis, they were my teammates. They were balling. Warren Sapp was playing tight end at that time. I was starting defensive tackle. Yeah. They moved him over to D-line and he looked at me he's like, yo, dude. I'm gonna take your spot. I said, you ain't taking my fucking spot. He said, I'm gonna take your spot. I said, no, you ain't. We battled and he took my spot. <laughs> and you can imagine how that fucked with me because there goes my opportunity. He went in, switched the defensive tackle, lit the world on fire. Well, what that did, it crushed me and it crushed my dreams. I had a piss poor senior year, zero production, no NFL, no combine invite, nothing. Finally went to the CFL. Calgary Stampeders making $250 a week Canadian. Canadian. I had to send that shit home to my, uh, to my wife at that time. I had no money. So I remember that. When I got cut from Canada, I had seven bucks in my pocket. And I always tell that story. So now my production company is seven bucks, advertising agency is seven bucks, everything is seven bucks. So I always remember that. What helps me is to keep the hard times in the front of my mind because it allows me to go into these big moments that I've worked my ass off and you guys have worked your ass off. It allows me to go into these big moments with a different perspective. What it also does for me, and again, this just this is what works for me. Like, <clears throat> I keep my back, excuse my language, my back is up against this motherfucker every day. It's against this fucking wall. Excuse my language, wait, it's in the room. But it's up against this motherfucker because it's what I believe in. And when my back is against this motherfucker, then there's nowhere to go. But that way, that's it. So I feel like this could be something, an ideology and mindset that could help you, could, if you look at it that way. Because you made it already. We made it. We're successful boys and we're lucky boys to be where we're at. Oh, you guys made it. Everybody's rich in the room. Nobody's gonna get evicted anymore. Anything you got, there's no more money problems, right? You got a lot of hands out now. Are you gonna get a little bit? Can I get a little bit? Right, that happens. <clears throat> but when you make it, for me, I need this. I need this. So every day, my back is up against this motherfucker and this is how I operate. Now, doesn't mean you don't smile. Doesn't mean you don't laugh and joke, right? You're happy, I'm happy, I'm a happy guy. 
But when it comes to business and when it comes to executing, it's up against this. And I got to go that way. And I don't give a fuck who is in front of me. They're not going to stop me. I feel like for me, it feels seamless because you prepared for so long. But it's just like you guys prepping for a game. That's the fun part. That's where it's like, fuck, it's fun, man. People are paying their hard-earned dollars to come see you. They're cheering, they're going bananas, they're booing the shit out of you or on the road. It's, that's fun. That's what you live for. I mean, that's the juice right there. The prep is where the character's made. And I just don't mean the character I play, I mean the fucking, the character in here. So for me, the prep is getting with the director, getting with the producers, getting with the writers, getting with the, getting with, so in essence, it's like getting with all your coaches and your different uh, position coaches and, and all the meetings that you have to have, right? So that's the work you put in. The key for me was, where does it start? What's the anchor? What's the anchor? So I could have all these ambitions and you guys have all these ambitions, which is great. It's important. I'll play this role. You'll play that role. I'll execute this thing and it'll come out this summer. You guys will execute this thing during the summer, right? When it's time to really put in a lot more work. But the key with me is just always finding what the anchor is. And the fucking anchor is getting up at four o'clock in the morning every day before anybody else and grounding my thought process is in the no one will outwork me. No one. I love and I respect you guys. The motherfuckers won't outwork me. All starts with this. Two hands, putting in the work. The anchor for me has always been the work in terms of the weight room training. So when I first started wrestling, I was six years old, rolling on the mats with my dad. My old man, a lot of you guys will know this. Yeah, Rocky Johnson. <laughs> my old man was Rocky Johnson. He was the first black WWF tag, WWF at that time. First black WWE tag team champions with Tony Atlas back in 1983. Uh, my uncles were the wild Samoans. I come from a long line of pro wrestlers. Um, but before the wrestling part happened, uh, I was just in the gym putting in the work at six years old, rolling around on the mats. And finally, when I could touch weights at 13, that's what I was doing. But the weight part for me and the gym part has has always been, has to be the anchor. Look, at the end of the day, like again, I'll, that's it's the kind of stuff that I talked about at, at top is I have to hold on to uh, my dad in his pickup truck came down four o'clock in the morning, picked me up at in, in Miami from Tampa. We lived in a little shitty apartment in Tampa. He drove down in his little pickup truck to, to, to Miami to get me when I was cut from the CFL. I was driving up I-75. I don't know if you guys are from Florida. Any of you guys, if you know, it's I-75. It's like, especially down in Florida, Alligator Alley. I'll never forget it. It's four o'clock in the morning. And I thought, well, fuck. The, I, I, I leave home like you guys left home. I'm ready to tackle the world, get after it, achieve my dreams and goals fucking crushed by 22, 23 years old. I'm, now I gotta move back in with my mom and dad. I played on great teams though. Wait a second, this is not supposed to be my future. I'm supposed to be in the NFL right now. I'm supposed to be making a lot of coin and buying my parents shit, buying me shit, taking care of my wife, but it never happened. So I pulled out my wallet. I thought, well, let me see how much money I have. I opened it up. I had a five, a one and change. I'm not fucking around. And, and I, and, well, at least I rounded up to seven bucks. But I thought, God, ain't this a bitch? I got seven bucks in my pocket. Where the fuck do I go now? What do I do? I can't go back to the CFL. Because, I, I, you know, a point comes where you hear that voice, big run's over. Like, you're done. Right? So I heard that voice. So as Coach was saying, man, I hold on to that shit. I'm telling you. I keep my back is up against this motherfucker. We laugh. We joke. We have a good time. Press is always fun to do. Sometimes you got to make it fun. That's another thing. You got to do your best to make press fun if you can. But my back is still up against this motherfucker. I do not forget it. What this also helps me do, and again, it works for me, is at some point, you got to be fucking tired of not being number one. You have to be. And you got to fucking play angry. And I play angry. Now, I'm cool and calm with my approach. And when I step out on my field, which is a set or... You know, like, there's some, and you're always gonna have haters, and haters are like, well, God damn, man, how many movies are you gonna make, or how much shit are you gonna do? Like, you do a lot of shit. I say, yes. It's my ambition. Of course, why not? I could do it. Yeah, I love what I do. And not only that, but in what world do we not work every day? It doesn't mean, it's just like you guys in the off season. You gotta work every fucking day, it doesn't end. 
my back is up against this thing, you know, and I, and I, and I started to play angry, by the way, and, and I, still, I still play angry. My last match, Brock Lesnar, transitioned, and I realized if I had to be great at something, I wanted to be great in this world of Hollywood and movie making and producing and entertainment, I had to commit, and like you guys have to commit. Obviously, you commit to something, commit to the goal. So I quietly retired. Two years later, I thought, what the fuck did I do with my career? Because my movies were not doing well. I was written off. I was like, it was around 2006, 2007. I was like, God damn. I left, I pulled a Jim Brown. I left when I was on top, like number one in the wrestling business. And I left, it was a ballsy, gutsy, some call it stupid move, but I had to commit and I had to follow what was in my gut. And at that time, I'll share this with you guys. And Will Smith is my boy. And I sat down at that time with the agency I was with. And they said, what do you want to accomplish? I said, I want to accomplish the world. I want the world and I want, I want Will Smith's career. But, and I said, and I mean this respectfully because I know he's here at this agency with us. I want to do it bigger. One of the keys is remember where you came from. Keep that shit in the front of your mind. And when shit goes bad and it goes sideways, a lot of shit does. You're getting booed out of the fucking building or you're coming through this injury or people are you writing you off. Oh, you guys ain't gonna fucking make it. You know, any of that shit. You gotta, you gotta keep it in here. You, and it really has to, it should drive you. This idea and this notion that you could be anything you want and you can accomplish anything you want, right? We hear that. You've heard that from the time you were little boys. You hear that now. You're already incredibly accomplished. You can win an NBA championship, MVP of the league.